white, then these white people, they just take what they want and they leave the rest. And not to deal with any of this shit, they think they're part of the struggle. Fuck that, okay? I feel like if you're a white person and you wear dreadlocks, you should get pulled over all the time. One in six of you should get incarcerated once in your life. And probably the most annoying thing is you have that dumb white girl being like, oh my god, can I touch it? talked to a girl with dreadlocks, I was like, what's up with this? You know, because I actually, this is how I am in real life, so I'm like, what's up with this? And she was like, actually, like, before there was, like, shampoo, like, lots of people had dreadlocks in it, actually. I was like, that was, like, the worst argument I ever had. <laughs> lots of people had dreadlocks before they washed their hair. Lots of people had fucking polio before they came to a vaccine. doesn't mean you should go about trying to get it. I feel like, I feel like a lot of white people, they don't understand their family. And a lot of, I feel like a lot of women here don't understand that they have some advantages. They get women to take care of here, you know? I went to Baldwin the other day, Baldwin Infirmary. And did you, fellas, did you know this? Women, they, women know about this, but they don't, they don't talk about it. <laughs> I went to the infirmary. Did you know women have a whole fucking floor? <laughs> it's just like women's floor. Just they're women, you know? And you hear the baby parts in here. Just a whole women. Women have a whole floor. Men, we have a guy named John. <laughs> So they sit her down, they sit her down, 
And she's like in the front, it's like she's supposed to be listening to the judge who's talking to her about the very serious charges that are being left against her. And she's reaching into her pocket and she's got like full of like lint and shit. She pulls out these like browns. I cannot make this up. She pulls out these fucking browns and just starts stuffing her. And then she's like, she keeps trying to like smuggle them back. Like, here, you take some of that. Like, oh, it's a fucking brownie. And then I'm like, where the fuck did you get brownies? And the cops are like, actually, you have a funny story. Like, she, she broke out of the jail cell and uh, stole our brownies. I was like, you stole brownies from a police station? Are you fucking retarded? Yeah, I know, she's a real apple. She's a real apple. Yeah, she's a cracker. The firecracker is one. And I'm like, oh, and I was like, so well, what did you have brownies at the police station? She's like, oh, we baked them for charity. I was like, oh, what was the charity for? She was like, he was like, homeless children. <laughs> and I thought he was being sarcastic. I was like, wait, that was like literally the worst thing you could ever do. <laughs> but he wasn't kidding. And then finally, they, you know, they gave her charges, and they were like, um, so uh, which one of you two is her boyfriend? I was like, not fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this fucking the boyfriend was like me. <laughs> Um, and he was just like, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> She's a real doozy! <laughs> anyway, thanks guys. That's my time. Um, so this next guy coming up has the rare distinction of being both Jewish and from Miami. 